what is the difference between a heart attack and sudden cardiac death or sudden cardiac arrest? Well, when you have sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death, you die right away. But when you have a heart attack, um, you may not die right away. It's usually involving an obstruction in the coronary artery that goes to the heart muscle itself. But with these other conditions, the electrical system of the heart just shuts down. And for the majority of the time, it's called idiopathic, which means they don't know what causes it. So I want to talk about the relationship between omega-3 fatty acids and the electrical system of the heart, as well as how you can use fish oils to decrease the risk of sudden cardiac arrest or death. So what is so special about these omega-3 fish oils that you keep hearing about over and over and over? And how do they help you um, as far as the heart function? Well, first of all, they have several properties uh, that involve the heart. They're antiarrhythmic, which means they help the heart stay in rhythm. They're anti-inflammatory, which anytime you reduce inflammation to the heart, you're going to help the heart function. And if the inflammation goes too long, you can get fibrosis to the heart. And it just so happens that these fish oils trigger genes that turn off the fibrosis effect of the heart. Fish oils are also anti-thrombotic, which means that they inhibit this thrombus or this clot formation. So they help keep the blood on the thinner side so it doesn't clot unnecessarily. Even though if there's a problem in the artery, you want it to clot, but fish oils can help prevent this uh, inappropriate clotting. Fish oils also support this endothelial layer on the inside of your arteries, which is going to help your blood pressure. And it's also going to prevent the formation of calcium and cholesterol from forming on the inside of the arteries. But despite all that, I think the biggest benefit that fish oils can do for your heart is make your cell membranes very fluid and less rigid. If we take a look at the opposite of omega-3, we're dealing with omega-6 fatty acids, okay? And that would be all the seed oils, the vegetable oils, the soy oil, the cotton seed, uh, safflower, sunflower oil, peanut oil. All these oils invade the cell membrane and make them more rigid. It's extremely important that you have the ratios of omega-6 to omega-3 correct. And they really should be like a one-to-one -one ratio. An average person in the U.S. has like a 15-to-one ratio to omega-3 fatty acids. And so you can imagine the stiff arteries. You can imagine all the other problems that occur with these omega-6, increasing insulin resistance, increasing the risk of obesity, increasing the risk of getting a fatty liver, and the list goes on and on and on. So based on that data, you might think, well, okay, well, I'm doing fish oils. I'm doing supplements each day. I'm fine. But what you may not know is there's a lot of the hidden sources of omega-6 fatty acids. And this, omega-6 fatty acids compete with omega-3. So the more that the omega-6 are in the diet, the less you're going to get of the omega-3. So if you're doing both of these at the same time, you're really nullifying the effects of omega-3. And this is very important to know. So let's go through some of the foods or the hidden foods that are high in omega-6. Well, you have all the animals that are fed grains, okay? Like the commercial chicken, the commercial chicken eggs, grain-fed beef versus the grass-fed beef. All of these are very high in omega-6. Um, all the grains, the bread, the pasta, the cereal, the crackers, very high in omega-6. Uh, most of the nuts are high in omega-6 except for walnuts uh, do have a precursor to the omega-3 fatty acids. And then what about all the salad dressings? Try to find a salad dressing that does not have vegetable oil. You wanna make your own out of extra virgin olive oil and vinaigrette. Then we have the condiments like mayonnaise. Okay, that's usually made out of soy oil. Try to find a mayonnaise that doesn't have omega-6 oils. What about hummus, right? You buy hummus for your to dip your uh, cucumbers. I mean, it's very difficult to find hummus without omega-6 oils. For some reason, they just don't add the olive oil in the recipe. Well, I know the reason is just because it's too expensive, but you want hummus with extra virgin olive oil, not soy oil or safflower oil. Now, farm-raised fish does, by the way, have more omega-3 fatty acids than wild-caught fish. However, it also has six times higher omega-6 fatty acids 
than wild caught fish. And then we have restaurant food. I mean, it's just loaded with omega-6 fatty acids and the oils and fast food, especially you know, typical French fries, uh, deep fried and all the omega-6 oils. So this is a very important video. If you don't know this information, start increasing, okay, your fish oils, cod liver oil is a little bit better because it not only has the omega-3 fatty acids, but it also has vitamin D and vitamin A, whereas fish oils don't. However, fish oils are still good. Uh, make sure you include uh, salmon or fatty fish uh, while caught in your diet on a regular basis. But more importantly, really start avoiding these omega-6 fats that seem to creep into our diet uh, so often. And on top of that, it's fascinating to me how the so-called um, nutritional experts will tell you that you need to replace your saturated fats with the omega-6 when there's absolutely no evidence to show that that's going to improve your heart in any way, shape, or form. Now, if you haven't seen my video on cod liver oil, you should check that out. I put it up right here.